Hello class, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna do some exercises on discontinued operations. Remember when we talk about discontinued ops, we said there are two situations that we will need to record discontinued operations. The first one is for the components that are already sold, and the second one is that haven't been sold, but we are uh, we have the uh, intention is most likely to be we are negotiating and you know the time the preparation time takes um, you know more than a year to to uh, work on it now for those that are components that are already sold how are we gonna do the reporting we're gonna report two parts number one remember before um, the component is sold uh, we are still operating these components, right? For example, Google still have the Motorola doing business. It's a continual uh, operation. So from the beginning of the fiscal uh, period, for example, January the 1st, all the way to the date that we decide to sell it, or the, uh, you know, the transaction completion date, Motorola is still operating. So there must be some operating income or losses generated during this period. We have to report um, the operating income or loss, loss from this period. Now the second one, you must have known, it must be you know, the transaction price, right? We have a price, the price may be higher or lower than the book value, you know, this component's value sitting in the balance sheet. If the price, is higher, that means we sell it at a better price than um, you know, the book value. We will recognize a gain. Otherwise, we will recognize a loss. Now, how do we report for the second uh, situation for components held for sale? We're gonna do something very similar. Of course, we are gonna report the operating income or loss. Uh, but in this case, since there is no disposal date, so it must be from the beginning of the reporting period to the end of the reporting period. Now we haven't set up the uh, transaction price, but there is a fair value, fair value of this uh, uh, component. So there will be an impairment loss if the carrying value of the assets of the component is more than the fair value minus cost to sell. Right, so it just say one side. So it is just the side where the, where the carrying value, the book value is greater, is more than the market price. It didn't say the other side, which is when the carrying value is smaller. So, you know, selling definitely can guarantee a gain, right? Because our book value is lower and I know I can sell it at a higher price, even net of the cost to sell. But we will not recognize the gain until you know, the component is finally sold. Uh, if the assets are impaired and written down, any gain or loss on disposal, right, the next step, now is held for sale. Maybe next year, we can finally sell it, and that we call it disposal. So if next year or next quarter it is actually disposed, uh, and then we have to do this part, right, the second one. We're gonna compare it uh, to recognize gain or loss, compare the market price, the price that uh, the transaction price to the new um, updated book value, which is after the adjustment of this part. Now let's look at an example. Uh, this Duluth company decided to sell one of its divisions and it says it's qualified for a separate component. So this is discontinued ops. And the decision is made in October, 2021. The division is, was sold uh, on, in the same year, right? On December 18th, 2021. So it, you know, the lens is just one year, less than one year. So uh, we don't need to consider the health for sale. We, it is just uh, you know, a component sold. Now, two facts related to the division. Number one, from January to the disposal date, uh, division had a pre-tax loss uh, from operations 
uh, five million dollars. Now this is operation loss, right? So that was the first scene, uh, situation that we need to report. Uh, two, the assets of the division had a net selling price of fifty million dollars and a book value of twelve million dollars. But the price is higher than what is marked in our book, so we have a gain. We have a gain of uh, three million dollars. The difference between fifteen and twelve. Uh, to lose income statement for 2021, beginning with an after tax uh, income from continuing operations of $20 million, will be reported as follows, assuming a 25% tax rate. So we start with this $20 million, uh, and then this is for continuing operations. Then the next part must be discontinue ops. Now, we have the following two. Now the first one is a loss of five million dollars from number one, and the second one is a gain. Right? We just talked about it. The difference between these two is a positive three million dollars. A negative five million and a positive three million comes to uh, a negative two million dollars. So you see here, I said loss from operations of discontinued opponents, and. That is a negative a parenthesis of $2 million. Wait, how about a tax? Right, since it's a loss, though, so we have an income tax benefit. The net benefit is $2 million, right, times the 25%. So it's $500,000. We have a positive $5,000, a negative $2 million. The net is $1,500,000. And we put it here. Loss on discontinued ops, $1.5 million. So then the net income, the final one, which we use 20 minus this 1.5 equals $18.5 million. The second one, held for sale. Uh, also in October, Duluth Holding Company decided to sell. Um, and it is qualified as the discontinued ops. Uh, on December 31st, the end of the company's fiscal year, the division has not yet been sold. Consider the following facts. For the year, the division reported a pre-tax loss operation of $5 million. Uh, at the end of the year, assets of the division had a book value of $12 million and a fair value minus anticipated cost of sale, uh, it, which is $9 million. So the market price is smaller than the book value by $3 million. We need to do an impairment loss. Uh, everything's the same, right? Beginning with after-tax income uh, of $20 million, and then we're gonna do the next part is continued operations. In this discontinued operations, number one, there is a loss of $5 million. Number two, another loss between the difference, the two, $3 million. So two losses in total, $8 million. That's why I put $8 million here with parentheses, meaning a loss. And don't forget the income tax. Now is a loss, so this is income tax benefit. So I use $8 million times 25% equals $2 million. Negative eight, positive two, uh, result is a negative six. So loss on discontinued ops is $6 million. Net income is 20 minus the six equals $14 million. So you can see they are really very similar. Um, it's just one using an actual price. The other is a fair value minus the anticipated cost to sale. Now keep doing this uh, example. Uh, you can pause here. Okay, on May the 1st, uh, Foxtrot agreed to sell the assets of its footwear division um, to Albanese for $80 million. The sale was completed on December 31st, so same year. The following additional facts pertain to the transaction. The footwear division operations and cash flows can be clearly distinguished operationally 
So this one means it's qualified for a discontinued ops. Second, the asset totaled $48 million on the books. So book value of the asset is $48 million. Uh, Footwear's contribution to Foxtrot's operating income was a pre-tax loss of $10 million. The income tax rate is $40 million. So what is the income loss from discontinued operations? Now we are asking you the final step. So this step should be after the calculation of income taxes. So we have um, a loss of eight, ten million dollars. So we need to consider this one. And next, we're gonna compare the price to the book value. The price is eighty million dollars. Well, it was worth forty-eight million dollars in our book. So there's a gain, and the gain is the difference between these two, right? Eighty minus forty-eight. So we have an eighty minus a 48 and then there's a loss of 10 so still subtracting this 10. Now this is the total right pre-tax discontinue ops number next is about the tax. Well you can see this must be a positive number so we need to have an income tax loss. The net must be uh, the remaining 60 percent times the rest. So, right, income tax rate is 40%. One minus 40% is the remaining times the difference between these two numbers. 80 minus 48 is the gain. 10, negative 10 is the pre-tax loss of the operating income. So we have a 13.2 30, million positive income. Second, uh, suppose that footwear division asset was sold for $45 million. So instead of 80 here, we are sold at 45. Well, the asset is 48 on the books, and now you only sold it for 45. There's a loss on sale, and the loss is um, the loss is negative three million dollars. Now, the sales was completed as well. So it's also a um, component already sold. What is the income slash loss for discontinued operations? Now we have a loss on sale. We also have a, um, this part, operational income, also a loss of $10 million. So loss, loss must be loss uh, 10 right, minus 45, actually minus three, because you know the difference is three. So just minus three, then total is minus 13. And next we're gonna con consider the tax. There's gonna be a tax benefit, income tax benefit, since this is a loss. So net of the benefit, what is the remaining? Here's the calculation, All right? We calculate first this part as a negative 13. I don't know why they keep giving me this line. Here is negative 13. Um, and then we have the remaining, which we need to pay, which is a loss, 40% uh, is the tax rate, and remaining is 60%. So the net of the tax is negative 7.8. So if we consider these two formulas, one minus 40% times the selling price minus a asset book value, um, plus or minus the in operating income or loss, uh, while well, this one is 1 minus 40% price minus the book value minus the operating income or loss, this is exactly the same, right? So the calculation for uh, this income tax benefit or income tax loss, it's just a name. Calculation is totally the same. So that makes our life much easier. Now, next, 
suppose that the food ware division had not been sold, uh, but were considered held for sale. So this is the held for sale situation. Assume that the fair value of these assets was $40 million. So the fair value minus the cost, of, uh, cost to sell was $40 million. And the book value is 48. So there is an impairment loss because my book value is higher than the price that we are able to sell. And the loss is a difference, that's eight. And then we also have an operational uh, operating income, which is a loss, $10 million. So the total is 18, which is a loss. Now next, we're gonna consider the income tax, uh, right? And it's a benefit. Uh, again, applying the formula, uh, we do the following. One minus 40% times the difference, uh, 18, right? Then we get a negative 10.8 million, which is a loss. If we wanna do it, you know, using the previous step, Number one, we have a total uh, operational loss for the discontinued operations as negative 18. And then we can have the benefit, tax benefit, which is 18 times 40%. Then in the end, we net them out. So it's a negative 18 plus 18 times 40%. Now, if I subtract the 18 out, let's subtract a negative 18 out, then I will have one minus 40%. That's exactly what this formula is, right? Because I subtract a negative sign, here the this part becomes a negative sign. So for the formula, if you are asked about the final, final step, then use one minus the tax rate times the difference, you know, the net value. Okay, a quick review question. Again, you should pause it here and do it yourself. The answer of this question is B. Uh, let's look at the idea, uh, the, the question. So the company reported income before taxes of 375. Uh, this amount included a $75,000 loss on this continued operation. Okay, so the 375 is the very last step, including the loss, uh, the discontinued ops. The amount reported as income from continuing operations, assuming a tax rate of 40%, was, well, uh, Okay, so we have a final, final 375. And we know this 375 is the discontinued operations. And then on top of it is the uh, income, right? Of net income from the operating. And we know this is a 375 in the very end. And we also know that there is a negative 75, a loss on the discontinued. We can use this tool to get back to the net income from continuing operations, which is 375 plus 75. Um, now we get the net uh, discontinuing operations, net income. We know this is a final step of the tax rate, right? We, after subtracting the tax, so we need to get the tax back. This is one minus 